Introducing Benny the Bigfoot. Aww. Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. I don't know if I'm more excited that we're making a Squishmallow cake or a Bigfoot cake, but I do know Benny the Bigfoot is definitely my favorite Squishmallow. So you remember Beanie Babies, guys? I don't. I'm way too young for that. Squishmallows have replaced Beanie Babies. They are so popular and they fly off the shelves. So I say, if you can't find your favorite Squishmallow, just make one and then eat it. Now you know what my favorite Squishmallow is. What's your favorite Squishmallow? Comment down below. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button to let me know. If you'd like to learn how to bake and decorate more fun cakes and sweets, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you receive notifications every time I post a new video. I love Benny because you can make them out of chocolate. I use my addictive chocolate crusting buttercream so I could get that nice fur. And I also use my delicious moist and tender special vanilla cake recipe that I use especially for carving. Links to these recipes are down below in the video description. Here's the tools I use if you want to take a quick screenshot of this. All right, let's talk cake. Let's do this. I baked five six inch round cake layers using my vanilla cake recipe for carving. So I make sure it doesn't just fall apart when I cut it. We're just gonna stack these. You're gonna wanna use a cake drum that's one size up from the cake you're making and put it toward the back so we have room for the Bigfoot feet. Remembering to push down each cake layer so you get the air bubbles out of the buttercream. And making sure that your cake is staying level on the top and the sides. So after I put on the third cake layer, I'm gonna add some straws for support. Bigger straws like milkshake straws or boba straws. I'm just gonna do three kind of in the center just to help support the weight. Just keep in mind you are gonna be carving this cake, so make sure you put them, don't put them too far out to the edges. And this will be helpful to hold it all together later when you're carving it too. So after you're done stacking, you can chill it for about 20 minutes just to make sure the buttercream's not sliding around so we can be ready to carve it. Just make sure you don't chill it for more than 20 minutes because this cake is not crumb coated, so it could dry out if you leave it in too long, but 20 minutes is fine. So this Squishmallow demand is insane. My daughter's like, we have to get to the mall as soon as it opens, or the Squishmallows will run out. So we get there five minutes after they open, and there's only one left. And this other little girl is walking out with my daughter's favorite Squishmallow. So we follow this nice family to the parking garage and I offer them cash money because that's how I roll. Now I didn't do that. I'm not a real housewife. <laughs> All right, our cake is chilled, so now we're going to carve it. Remembering to carve just little pieces at a time because it's a lot easier to take more off than to put some back on. So it's easier to carve something two-dimensionally than three-dimensionally. So I like to carve the sides out and then the front and back out and then meet the sides with the front and the back. And to keep track of where my front, back, and sides are, I make a cross at the top of the cake. I also like to think of my cake as a grid. So I can see that halfway down is the widest part of my cake. And it should gradually curve to the top of my cake. I should end up about a quarter of the way in, for example. If you'd like more detail on carving cakes, I have a video, Five Secrets to Carving Cakes into Shapes, and I'm actually carving a Squishmallow in this video as well. It's just a mini Mickey Mouse Squishmallow. So they basically have the same shape. You know what I was thinking? Why do they call Real Housewives real? That's not real. What's real is strategically picking out your pajamas Friday night so they could borderline pass as an outfit on Saturday because what you really want to be doing on a Saturday is binge watching your favorite TV show in your pajamas eating your favorite cereal. Now that's real. Why does that sound so good to me right now? I am totally going to binge watch after making this cake. Who's with me? All right, now that our cake is all carved, we're going to crumb coat that. And I like to save my cake scraps and put them in a Ziploc freezer bag and freeze them to make cake pops later. Now the way we're going to frost these curves is by using a flexible blade. So I just buy a roll of acetate and I cut out my tool myself. 
Make sure you cut it out that the factory edge is your blade because this is going to be the straightest line. Spreading your fingers out to control the curve. And you're going to want your blade shorter than this. I just exaggerated it in the picture so you could see. After our crumb coat's done, we put it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes to chill. And then we can go ahead and frost it. And if you'd like more detail on this, you can watch my video, Five Secrets to Frosting Curves. All right, now that this is frosted, we can put this in the refrigerator. And next, we're gonna make our Bigfoot face. There are so many different names for Bigfoot. Even within different states of the United States, there's different names, but most commonly, it's Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti in Asia, Yowie in Australia. Let me know in the comments what country or state you're from and what you call Bigfoot. So first we're gonna make our black buttercream. So we'll have it ready when it's time to pipe the mouth. All you have to do is add some black icing color to a little bit of your chocolate frosting. As we make the face, this will oxidize. So the black will deepen in color even further. I drew the face on parchment paper with a pencil so I can use it as a guide to cut the face out of fondant. So my cake's about seven and a half inches tall and a little more than six inches wide. So I went with a three inch by four inch face. So I just measured out and drew the marks and then made an oval within those parameters. And I actually used a piping tip to make the circles. I traced the smaller end of a 1A piping tip which we'll use later to cut out the eyes. And if your oval doesn't end up perfect, no worries, we can always cover it with hair. That's the beauty of nature. It is imperfect. Same with the face too, if things don't end up exactly symmetrical, I just think it ends up making it even cuter. Gives it character. So first we're gonna make the tooth because it's white, so it's less messy. So take out some white fondant, rub some vegetable shortening on your hand so it doesn't stick and knead this and warm it with your hands until it's softer. Then we're gonna roll it into a ball, dust our work surface and fondant roller with cornstarch and start rolling it out. And we're just gonna hand cut this with an X-Acto knife. It's just a triangle, so it's not that hard of a shape to make. And we're gonna round the edges just a little bit with our fingers to make it look more like a tooth. Then set that aside, put it under a little plastic wrap to keep it moist while we're making our other pieces. All right, next we're gonna make our eyes. I just buy a little black fondant because it's a pain to color fondant black. So do you know there's been over 2,000 sightings of Bigfoot just in Washington State? And in the southeast of Washington, there is a county called Skimania County that actually has a law in the books against hunting Bigfoot. The Pacific Northwest has the most sightings in the United States, so it makes sense that this law would be in Washington. But then I wonder, is this the chicken or the egg? Maybe Bigfoot came to Washington because they made the law. Hmm. I'm a thinker, you guys. I am a thinker. <laughs> All right, now that our eyes are done, you can go ahead and put those under a piece of plastic wrap. Now it's time to make the actual face. So let's grab some white fondant and we're gonna color this with a little bit of ivory icing color because Benny's face is kind of an off-white. And then same thing, roll it out, not too thick, not too thin. Then I'm gonna put the piece of parchment paper that I drew Benny's face on, put it on top of the fondant and use it as a guide to cut out that oval. We're gonna add all the pieces of the face now because it's a lot easier to add it on a flat surface than when it's on the cake but we want to do it pretty quickly because we don't want the face to dry too much because we need it to stay flexible. So go ahead and put a little water on the back of the eyes and place them. And I cut the piece of parchment paper at the mouth so I could use it as a guide to make a little indent with the X-Acto knife so I could pipe the mouth the way I want it to. Oh, I hate when this happens, <laughs> when the piping line breaks. I could have edited this out, pretend like it never happened, but I'm keeping it real. <laughs> All right, last but not least, place that cute little tooth. All right, let this sit just for about like five minutes just to make sure everything's stuck on there. All right, time to get the cake out of the refrigerator and dip a brush in some water and just wet down the area where you're gonna put your face. 
and then carefully place it. I like to start it kind of at the top and slide it down into place. And we're using a crusting buttercream and it's chilled so it shouldn't stick until it gets to the wet part. And then put that in the refrigerator for at least 10 minutes to make sure it's really stuck on there. And now it's time to pipe the fur. And I like to start with piping it around the face first. In this row I'm piping the fur from the face outward. So the fur looks like the stuffed animal where it's kind of pushed away from the face. So I really want to know, do you believe in Bigfoot or not? Comment down below. And if you have any Bigfoot stories, please share them. I love hearing these stories. They're so fun and mysterious. And then after I do that first row around the face, I like to get a little messier with it because I want the fur to look realistic. A little trick I have to make that happen is I'll pipe one piece straight up and then the next piece pull to the right, then the next piece straight up, and then the next piece pull to the left. And just keep repeating that pattern. I like to make some a little longer, some a little shorter. So I'm using a tip number 234, which is great for fur. And you really gotta make sure you build up the buttercream first before you pull it away so the fur actually sticks to the cake. So after you build up a little buttercream, keep the pressure on the piping bag, start slowly pulling away, and when the fur is to the length you'd like, then stop pressure and quickly jerk the bag away. And if your hand gets sore, and it will, <laughs> stop, take a break as soon as your hand gets sore. I've learned this lesson many times, <laughs> trust me. If you take a break, your hand will be fine the next day. If you don't, it'll hurt for like a week. And then just keep doing this about halfway down the entire cake. And then it's time to do the ears. For this piping motion, you're going to build up the buttercream and then your piping bag's gonna go a little bit upward and over itself. And you're gonna wanna hold the squeeze longer to get longer hair. Always pulling downward because that's where you want the hair to be flowing. So your hands kinda kinda move in like a top of an S motion. And then drag straight down. And you're gonna wanna build up the buttercream on top of itself where the ears are thicker. Okay, can I just say how cute you are, Benny? Oh my gosh, you're so cute. And you smell so good. And you are gonna taste so good. Have you guys ever seen the movie Harry and the Hendersons? If you haven't, Bucket Loose movie, you have to watch it. So I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but I've got a little bit of a Harry and the Henderson situation going on in my house right now. More of that in a minute. This Bigfoot needs some feet. So we're gonna make these out of Rice Krispie treats because they taste the best. So we're gonna melt 10 marshmallows in the microwave for one minute and immediately mix that in with four cups of Rice Krispie treats. As soon as these Rice Krispie treats are cool enough where they won't burn your hands, can go ahead and start sculpting them. Rub some vegetable shortening on your hands like lotion so they won't stick to you. So the trick to sculpting these is to really pack them together tight. So I like to roll it in a ball, like a two inch ball, really tight, and then start sculpting it. So think of baby booties when you're sculpting these. You also have to think about how the back of these feet are going to fit against the Bigfoot body. So I'll just check them against the cake and just make adjustments as needed. One quick tip for where the pads of the feet are gonna be, that you're gonna want almost flat. So an easy way to do this is just push it against the countertop to flatten it. And once you have one foot done, it's a lot easier to sculpt the second one because you can kind of just match it up to the first one. I made the feet approximately one and a quarter inches wide by one and a half inches tall. And when you're done sculpting them, you can go ahead and frost them with your buttercream. Again, using our acetate tool. And I use a tip number 47 to apply the buttercream. So we're friends with this cryptozoologist and he asked us if we can watch his new dog. He said, it's a great Dane mixed with a poodle, so it's pretty big. Is that okay with us? And we're like, sure, we love dogs. Can't wait to meet him. I guess it's called the Great Dana Doodle or something like that. Okay, this is funny. I totally made that up. <laughs> I just Googled it and they exist. They're called Great Danoodles and they're so cool. 
We just mix anything with a poodle nowadays. It's just the thing. So we get home and there's a Bigfoot in our house. He had mentioned they found a new animal species, which isn't totally uncommon, like maybe about 20 a year they find, but it's usually just a variation of an existing animal. So yeah, this is huge. Anyways, he is not well behaved and he scares me. I'm actually making this cake as a last ditch effort to intimidate him. I'm gonna eat it right in front of him. Ugh, what did he break this time? Right now we're gonna set those feet aside and we're gonna make those cute little pads for his feet. We're gonna roll out our leftover fondant from making the face. I'm gonna use my mini circle cutter set using the biggest circle in the set for the big toe pad and then the second biggest in the set for the other two pads. And then I'm gonna cut out the bigger pads. They're basically a heart shape, but they kind of swish to the inside. All right, set these aside under some plastic wrap. And now that our feet have had time to sit, we can go ahead and place them onto our cake board. And we don't wanna touch them too much, so the way I transfer them on is I Put a little piece of acetate under each one using it as a tray and then I bring it up to the cake board and slide it against the body of the cake. And let's not remove the acetate quite yet. Let's get the pads on first and then we can push against the pads to be able to slide those pieces of acetate out. Just put a little water on the back of the pads and place them on the feet. Okay, I thought of another must-see bucket list. Google Saturday Night Live Bioflex skit. It's with Will Ferrell. It's hilarious. I don't want to spoil it. Just trust me. You got to watch it. And real or not, you should really watch the Patterson-Gimlin film if you haven't. It's that famous footage of uh, supposedly real Bigfoot. It's pretty cool. And it's actually a female Bigfoot. Okay, now that the pads are on, we can push our finger against that big pad so we can slide the pieces of acetate out. Oh my gosh, this cake is so adorable. Please take pictures of your cake and send it to me. I would absolutely love to see it, so fun. And let me know in the comments what you'd like me to make next. And I have another Squishmallow video coming up soon of Mickey Mouse. So keep your eye out for that if you're a Squishmallow fan or a Mickey Mouse fan. Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to see you next time. Yeah.